Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Rad team, AITX team, this was an incredible year. It was a huge year. I can't even begin to attempt to say everything that we finished this year and got done and got on the tracks for 2022, but I'm going to do the best I can. So I want to start off with just a, a little exercise. I want everybody on the team to take a look around, take a look around either at your team's screen or take a look around if you're in person. And really, you have to congratulate who's beside you and who else is on our team, guys. We got to take a minute. I really want to thank everybody. I want everybody to thank everybody for getting us through this year and getting us to this point. When we all interviewed, when everybody interviewed with me and we went through the last the last interview, you know, everyone's got to kind of do that last call with me. And I said to pretty much everybody, I said, you will be part of an A-team. I said, I will surround you with other A-team members. And we've done that. And that's an accomplishment. So that's why I love you guys looking at each other, congratulating each other, because we are an A-team and that's hard to get. Give you a, a, a recent example, just a recent example. And I, I got to share that what I'm about to to share and illustrate today right now is is just representative of what I see all team members doing. Last night we had Alp, Sina, Hamza, Sky, Sebastian, state of 5 a.m. working on some new autonomy code. I mean, how crazy is that, you know? I don't ask for that, guys. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. But um, I mean, I see everybody do that. I see everybody digging deep, finding the extra energy, and performing incredibly well. And I believe that that comes from the fact that we are all A team members and that you can look across the table or on your screen and you can say, I like that person that I'm working with, I respect them, and they're challenging me to do better. From a company standpoint, this is the kind of performance that gets us to these points and lets me share some important metrics with you as we go through the presentation. Let's go to that next slide, please. Now, the contributions from the team have been outstanding, as I've mentioned. And during our pre-employment process and in the offer letters, I've uh, you know talked about the ESOP plan uh, Mr. Brenz and I uh, had an ESOP plan approved and submitted and filed properly this year. And I want to restate uh, that we are on track, as promised, to uh, deliver ESOP details and whatever those benefits, however those benefits look like, to team members this year, this year being 2022. So want everyone to know still on track, no, no issues, no hesitation. We're exactly on as promised. Thank you for that. It's my great pleasure to be able to do that. Uh, the next thing is, is by now, I think everybody should have had their annual reviews um, uh, with, you know, your, your team and so forth. Um, it was uh, really cool working with Mark on uh, the folks who got bonuses and raises. Um, and I want to make sure that I stress this. Those bonuses and raises are not motivation. Those are rewards. I know that we dig deep from a motivation standpoint for the mission, for everybody that's counting on us. I know that's where our motivation comes from. And being able to share some financial benefits are from a reward section, not from a motivation section. So I thank everybody for that. And there were some uh, promotions uh, made as well. I, I'm not going to go through the list. There, there weren't that many, but there were definitely a few. But there is one that I want to bring to uh, everybody's attention because it's, it's significant. Um, but that one is that... Mr. Fulmer, our, our president of Robotic Assistance Devices, has uh, elevated 
uh, our beloved Mr. Tony Taylor to the role of COO or Chief Operating Officer. So let's just take a minute. You know, I, I don't want to recognize all the all the uh, promotions that, that we made, but just it's a big, big, big deal. So Mr. Taylor, you know, came to us several years ago, grew up in the organization, um, as many of our leaders have, as many of our team has, and it's just amazing to have him in that in that role. Tony and I spent many, many evenings, many weekends, many overnights uh, sitting around, you know, trying to figure out how do we make our customers happy and uh, and creating a culture that is now throughout Tony's team and throughout the whole company of a focus on client services and client satisfaction. And that's been one of our biggest reasons why we're at this point here today, happy customers. So it's a, it's, it's a great way to recognize him and elevate him and make sure that his contributions can be shared as widely as possible throughout the organization. So thank you, Tony. At the same time, there is a small organizational change in as much as I am uh, relying upon uh, Mr. Fulmer um, to really manage 99% of, uh, of three of my favorite departments, specifically sales, production, and client services. So um, if you're on the sales teams, you've seen me back off over the past uh, couple months or so in anticipation of this announcement. Um, but I just want to formalize it and, you know, make sure everybody knows uh, Mark, assisted by Tony, is really uh, the top guy or the top person uh, in, those, in those three departments. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thanks, guys. Um, as a part of that change, uh, my role is going to have increased intensity and focus on uh, marketing, research and development, product development, product support. It's just why I'm, we're doing this call from our Waterloo facility. Um, the amount of talent that we've captured here and motivated here is, is spectacular. And we have a special team that's doing special things. So um, since our goal well, we'll get to the mission in a minute, but since we since we have a specific goal in mind, or a very broad goal, I guess, uh, I'm going to concentrate here. And uh, quite frankly, uh, Mark is better suited in every category to, um, to to manage those those elements that we've turned over to him. And uh, my focus will be on uh, on these other elements: uh, R and D, marketing, and of course, finance and pub co related issues. So. Just want to kind of do a bit of a level set there as far as division of duties and some organizational minor changes. So thank you for that. Now, over the course of um, this presentation, we're going to be sharing a lot of really good news, a lot of really progressive items, things that we've accomplished, things that we've done. And we're doing that because we need to take a moment right now to recognize where we were 12 months ago and recognize how far we've come. Number one, to celebrate the achievements and, and wins that we had over the last 12 months. And also, and perhaps in my opinion, more importantly, to give ourselves the confidence that the challenges we're gonna face and the milestones we have to hit in 2022 can and will be achieved. Because we did it in 2021. And we did it in 2021, under-resourced, underfunded, and in a different category. Now that we're in this new orbit where we have some of the best talent that you could possibly get on your team, our expectations have increased. And I know we're going to meet them because we did in 2021. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be problems. There's going to be obstacles and hurdles. Some are going to be calculated risks that we take and don't go our way. Some will be unexpected problems that we couldn't foresee or that we thought were so improbable that we didn't plan for. Ultimately, we will get through them and we're going to get through them because we've got the best team, because we've got this team of A players, 
because we've learned about each other. We trust each other. We are all practicing culture members of thoughtfulness and all those other elements. So I want to let you know that our culture of sharing difficult news and challenges must remain. It doesn't do me any good hearing everything's OK all the time. I know that's not the case. I know that there's problems. So please keep the culture of facing the problems, sharing the problems, working and solving the problems. That's 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 what we have to keep doing. We're going to have more logistics challenges in 2022. That's not going anywhere. Thank goodness we've got some amazing talent like Jerry on board to help with that, uh, assist D on it and Luke and Aziz on that stuff. But the point of this little uh, paragraph is, is let's not be scared to share problems. I want to hear them. There's no problem with the problems. Now, we're going to dig into the dig into the meat of this presentation that was uh, prepared by our very own RV and RV. I'll just share with you. I, I looked through it kind of, you know, today. It's spectacular. Really, really, really well done. Uh, AITX team. I hope you I hope you enjoy this. We're going to get through a few things. You can see them up on the screen there with the uh, with the agenda that's listed. Um, and uh, I don't know. Let's let's get let's get going. Y'all y'all read that screen. I don't need to read it. OK. OK, so um, I, I need one more. Is, is it going? OK, so guys. This should populate uh, the meeting goals slide should populate. Uh, let's click it again or something. It didn't take. Now, um, I always like starting out meetings with goals. I always like having a target to hit something to measure against. And uh, and we're going to start with our goals now. Um, we have to level set. You'll see on the growth side that we've added, I think, five times the number of employees, full time employees that we had 12 months ago. And as much as we try to communicate and I try to communicate, I try to share. Uh, I can't always be certain that everybody knows everything that they need to or they want to. So uh, after this meeting, I'm going to have confidence that we have. Uh, a, a, an organization where everybody is on an equal playing field in terms of what everybody knows. And we're, we're going to continue that. Uh, the next piece is, is there are certain uh, items that I want to celebrate as we did in the, in the preamble. So we're going to do more of that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about 2022. So those are the goals. You guys know me. I'm a feedback junkie. So uh, let me know after the meeting, send me a direct message, instant message, anonymous message. I don't know. I don't care. Tell me how, tell me how we did. Now the next slide, which is up now is the mission, right? Why, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? When Ian and I first got together several years ago, we, we talked about uh, using security, security robots as a way to do some more altruistic ventures. And those are certainly still on the horizon, but in the meantime, events have kind of overtaken those those goals. And now we're in a crisis, you know, a crisis throughout the Western world where we don't have enough bodies to do the jobs that we require to continue as a functioning society. I think uh, anyone who follows news saw this morning that unemployment is uh, again at pre pandemic unemployment levels, meaning there are not enough people, not enough people to do work. I think that it is a noble cause to help bring to life and to the market machines that are going to help us function as a society. And I know somebody's going to do it. So why not us? For me, that's our mission. And change always has conflict, you know, change and conflict go hand in hand. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be life. Life is a little messy. Business is a little messy. And I'm happy to be in the muck with this team working to make a difference. 
Look at that. Mr. Ian Pop is featured on this next slide holding what we what we once thought was the greatest Rosa that was ever created ever. Man, were we happy when we came up with that thing. And I'll give you a quick sidebar story on it. You know, we we basically we had a deployment in Los Angeles. You know, Luke Luke was uh, Luke was running it back in those days and and the client uh, loved Wally, but he decided to install them 12 feet above finished floor, right? And we kind of always had Rosa on the agenda. It was called Linda. The original name for Rosa was Linda. And uh, anyway, I was like, this this won't do. And, you know, the first Rosa turned out to be a, a sketch, as usual, that Ian turned my chicken scratch into into the first Rosa. But we we rushed it so fast that we... We didn't think about putting the cameras underneath. It was just an error of speed. And so when Rosa 180 came up about with the with the double the LED screen and you know it, we were like so happy that that Rosa it was so good, right? Best thing ever. And now we're finally at the point where I can say Rosa is 90% finished. And I don't mean that it's 90% finished in the models that we're selling now, the Rosa 3.0s, I mean that the vision that I have for those devices is only 10% away from when I think we finish with Rosa. And you'll see that we have uh, a Rosa 3.0 uh, model on the far, far, far side over there. I think I've shared some of uh, Rosa 3.0's uh, early operating videos with everybody. If you haven't uh, seen them, then please ask around so that you can you can see how Rosa 3.0 operates because it is truly stunning. It is truly stunning. And if you haven't heard, we're working on placing an order for a thousand units to do a few different things to bring some uh, stability to uh, production, uh, to get massive economies of scale and drive the cost of everything related to Rosa down. Um, and to be able to give our sales team the ability to say, I can ship that to you tomorrow. How many would you like? Big, 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 big strides. Anyway, that was a total sidebar, you know, off that one title slide. But let's take a look at some statistics. These are significant numbers. Everybody should remember we're not venture capital funded. There's no big investor behind us. There's no board of directors. It's really us. We get to call our own shots, which is remarkable. It's a remarkable feat of the American financial system that we're in this position. I'm very, very grateful to it, and I hope everybody else is as well. And like I said, it's messy. You know, not a lot of things in life are crystal clean and beautiful like in the movies and in TV. But we've had some incredible accomplishments as we rose out of the rose out of the dust. And one of them is the engineering team. And the engineering team that those numbers represent are a combination of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software developers, controls engineers, analytics engineers, machine learning folks, the whole gamut. And to have on staff 35 of these top flight engineers from all over the world. You know, we have the, it's such an incredible diverse group, each contributing their own unique angle and making us better is a significant accomplishment. Not only have we been able to bring together groups from totally polar opposites in the world and have them work like partners and team members and brothers and sisters is the quality of the backgrounds that these people come from. They come from Chrysler. They come from, you know, competing robotics companies. They come with doctorates, master's degrees, strong academic credentials, papers written. This is why I'm focusing on research and development. The number of devices and solutions that our team will output and the quality of those solutions is marvelous, fantastic. And we're going to seize the moment from 10 to 35. 
10 to 35. That's that's a big jump, and we'll be working on the numbers to see what we can support to continue to grow that team because uh, we need more. We always need more. The next statistic, offices from 7 to, uh, not offices, but employee locations from 7 to 36, right? Just kind of funny, you know, we've recruited from all over the United States and Canada. Uh, we have uh, team members in Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, London, Ontario, Waterloo, Ontario, British Columbia. We obviously have our West Coast folks that have been with us for a long time, Mr. Lipple, Mr. Ross, Aziz. We've, you know, I've, I've tasked the administrative group to open up, you know, tax IDs in 15 states or something like that, because we're bringing on folks like Brian Bothy and Corey Best. And, you know, we've got a couple folks in Texas now, which is great. And hopefully I expect we might open up an office in Texas uh, this year as well. So this year being 2022. So this is kind of a cool statistic. Again, goes to our corporate culture that we're able to recruit and integrate remotely the way that we've done. So I would say it's an accomplishment. Talking about accomplishments, you know, this is the big metric that I look at right now. But since we're, you know, primarily investor funded, it's not critical life or death. But I want to see a similar or greater increase in recurring monthly revenue in 2022. I think we can do it. A thousand Rosas, a hundred Romeo, plus Scott's Wallys and Ava's. I mean, it's sitting right there for us sitting right there for us. So it's a good number. It's kind of like a coming out number. And, um, and next year will be better. Uh, well, this is kind of a fun stat. Office production space. We went from a few thousand square feet to 36,000. And I'll share with the, the folks that aren't in Canada here. Uh, I got here, you know, this morning and I hadn't been here in a couple months, I think. It's been about two months. And this office is bursting at the seams. They got they got stuff piled up all over. They're so excited for Luke to take a bunch of stuff back to the wrecks because they'll be able to have some more bodies. So the Canadian office will uh, have a, ma a major expansion uh, this year as we continue to build a great team and great solutions and products, which is kind of fun to know. Um, Full-time employee increase, 546%. I'll do the math for you. We went from 13 to 71. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal. So I don't think we're going to increase five times in 2022. But I do expect that we're going to hire a uh, human resources slash recruiting uh, role. Uh, I think we've got the, the size for it. And the burden on the hiring managers is significant. It's taking away from core core competent items. So it's going to be a role that we're going to that we're going to need. So if you have any complaints, you're actually going to have a real HR person to send them to. So that's that'll be fun. Um, and cash. Man, oh man, we ran this company on fumes for years against all odds, against all odds. And at that time, my my job was to raise money every single way I possibly could. And we did. And we got through it. And now we're sitting on a great runway. And we are going to continue to build that runway through both great sales, great revenues, as well as um, excellent top-notch finance deals uh, with the public markets. So that's a pretty cool list of uh, accomplishments. Yep, thank you, Brian. I, I'm applauding. I'm applauding the team in my head when I look at those stats. It's it gives me it gives me the shivers. Really, really cool. But we're not done. We're not done on accomplishments. I hope my pacing isn't bothering. I'm just, I feel more comfortable pacing. No. Yeah. So this slide will populate. 26 deployments on December 1st, 2020. 199, 12 months later, I think we're at 206 now. I don't know offhand what the backlog is, but I do know that Mr. Corey Best just got a beautiful 10 Rosa order, like 
today, so Craig and Mark, I don't know if you guys timed it, so I'd have an announcement to make, but I'm grateful. Thank you. But uh, so I think probably with backlog, we might be sitting at 250 right now, which is good. But I'll share with you, I wanted more. We wanted more in the summertime uh, when we brought the sales team to the wrecks. We were really fired up to get to 500 by the end of February. You know, and these meetings are town hall meetings. There's good news and bad news. And despite incredible efforts by our sales team, we're not going to hit 500 deployed by the by the target that we had set, which was a very aggressive target. We might hit number of contracts in hand. That's 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 how we've adjusted the goal. But what the sales team did do during that time is we laid the groundwork for a tremendous 2022. And part of that is the number of, you know, I listed it as leads in this uh, on the slide there, but it's a good way to go into it, you know, from 170 to 470. Stage five basically means that, you know, we've got some verbals and we're kind of going through the process, got some boxes to check. Could still be a real long, long road from stage five where, you know, it's okay. We're on the, you know, we're not, we're not knocking on doors. You know, we're engaged, fully engaged now to stage nine, which is the closed stage, but that's tremendous productivity. I feel so comfortable happy. I just love being around our sales team because they just have such great enthusiasm, personality, performance, history. And now with the addition of Craig as our VP of sales, been with us uh, nine weeks um, and me kind of stepping out of the way. Uh, I've no, no doubts, no doubts that uh, those numbers are going to, are, are going to be hit and they're going to be hit really well with great deals. You know, people thought we were crazy or they thought I was crazy when I would agree to do deployments in states far from California. And I said, listen, you got to look at the vision. You got to look at the skills that we have to build inside the company. And part of those skills was the ability to remotely deploy. And it started out with Luke and Tony joined, Tony joined in, in, in codifying that process. Now we're in 20 states and four new countries outside of the United States. That's crazy. You know, you want a, a Rosa, you want a rad unit somewhere in the world. I can confidently tell you our team knows how to get that done. That's a big deal. Big, big, big deal. And all the while, all the while that we're building and growing and deploying and raising money and hiring great staff, all the while that we're doing that, we never lost sight of our primary goal, which is taking care of our clients. Less than 5% attrition. You can compare that to people in space adjacent to us. And they'll be at zero beside that five on the wrong side. So this attrition number, I don't necessarily know it'll stay less than 5%. You know, I don't know if that's reasonable long term as as mass increases. But nonetheless, we have it right now. And that's a huge number, a testament to some incredible team members. You know, we have one guy on the team. Well, we've got a lot of guys on the team, but there's there's one person in particular that like, you know, Tony Taylor and I will say, OK, we got to put this guy on that account. He's going to fix it. He's going to make it. and He's going to blush right now. He can't say he's not on my screen, but as Mr. Davis Oppenheimer, I mean, he is our he is our fixer. He is he is the man. He has made some incredible contributions to this team. Yeah, thank you for thank you for applauding him. And not to say that Andrew Quinn and Jeremy Lombardi and, um, oh my goodness, you know, I got Jesse over there in California that reports to Tony. I know I'm, I'm missing one and I apologize Spencer very much. Sure. Thank you so much. My goodness, Spencer, what an amazing team keeping customers happy. 
I'll do a little shout out to Spencer. Newly married. Newly married. I think it's a week or so. A week or so old. Very exciting. Very exciting. Gets to gets to join our incredible team. Gets to perform on the account like a champ. That's the account that I had most visibility to, Spencer. I know you do a lot of other things. And now married, you know. We've had a few a few weddings on the company. We've had lots of babies born. You know, it's really fun. It's a fun team. Fortune 25 end users. I think that number is a little low, actually. I just haven't looked at the customer list and compared it against the Fortune 25 list or the Fortune 500 list. Mark and I like briefly talked about it, but like neither of us were able to put the time aside to, to actually get the statistic. But the notable element of this is that dealing with the customers that many of you know we have, and we don't say their names because, you know, we don't want loose lips shink, sink ships, but it's remarkable that a company like ours has figured out a need that we can fill and provide fast return on investment to such an extent that some of the biggest corporations in the world have adopted us and are expanding with us. It's remarkable. It's a huge accomplishment. And of course, our operating hours have dramatically increased. You know, we have some incredible programmers, software developers that have been with us from the very beginning, you know. I got to call these guys up, but it's uh, Tanvir, Tala, Adnan, and Hassam, you know, created RadSock with us, created Rad Mobile Control, created RadGuard with us. And, you know, watching those team members engage the new software developer team members like Reza, Hassan, Thomas has been amazing. It's It's been amazing. I couldn't be happier with how that team has expanded and how that team works together. So congratulations and kudos to you guys for, 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 for making that happen. Uh, and then, of course, you know, as we are successful in the market, uh, or rather in the industry, it drives our success with our AITX community. And, uh, you know, I know a few of you follow us on the social on the social side. And, you know, I certainly encourage everybody to watch the uh, the weekly video updates that we put out on the AITX side, see how we're communicating to the market. But, you know, everybody in our company should know that we don't have a single source of investor. You know, we don't have that one venture capitalist. We don't have a series A, B, C, D, or E, right? We're not responsible to any of that. We're working for tens of thousands of hardworking, normal people around the world who have found AITX and have put 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 5,000 bucks, 1,000 bucks into the stock. You know, we don't get the money directly when the stock's traded, but they, they're, they're counting on us. They're betting on us. And it's a responsibility, but the amount of, of love and support and encouragement is overwhelming. And I spend some of my day every day engaging and answering questions and so forth because it's very important to us. So know that there is a tremendous community, tremendous community, tens of thousands of investors supporting us, watching us. It's something good. Now, at the same time, like I said, business is messy. We have detractors, saboteurs trying to mess things up. And that's just, that's just how it is. That's just the messiness of life. There's winners and they're losers. And today we um, we made a bunch of new enemies. We made some big enemies today. Today, those who those who follow know that we announced that uh, we have given a green light to the development of our delivery service robot. And uh, we'll hit that a little bit a little bit later. But what that 
what that means is now there's a bunch of slightly established competitors that are looking at us saying, oh man, what does that mean for their business? Just as if we had a competitive entry into what we do, which we will one day, which is why we have to stay ahead. But we'll see what happens on the social with, uh, with that, right? Now, luckily, I have worked hard to create a bubble around the AITX team. And you guys don't have to worry about it. Don't pay attention to it. Ignore it. Just take the good part out of it, which is that there's tens of thousands of people that have bet on us and support us. Everything else is noise, just noise. Water off a duck's back. And it's water off a duck's back because we get love and support from the AI Techs community, we get love and support from our team members, and we get love and support from our customers. And these next few slides, which we'll populate in a second, have some actual customer quotes that Mark um, Mark curated for us, and which I'll in which I'll read. Oh, there we go. I think this is one of JL's customers. Damage to vehicles, graffiti on the exterior of the building, homeless tampering with our electrical outlets to charge their phones, trash left around the property. These are problems. These are problems that cost customers money. And if you assign a security officer to it, besides the fact that you're paying ridiculously high amount of money, you've created risk, risk of confrontation and risk of a whole nother suite of bad things happening. In this particular case, that's all gone since we put the roses in. I love that. I love that. That keeps me going. I'm going to read this one right here before it populates. A week or so ago, I got some video footage of three guys coming out of the woods at about two in the morning. I think this is another JL's or Mark's customers. I think this is north of Los Angeles. By closely watching the footage, you can see their response to Rosa's activated warning and voice warning, whatever, right? They scooted right along to get out of view, which is exactly what we were hoping to do with Rosa. Solving simple problems over and over again. We're going to do this 100,000 times. The 100,000 Rosas. I love the pictures in the background, everybody, by the way. I hope that you're seeing it, you know. There's Gary, Jeremiah, I think one of the mats uh, working in the wrecks there. Um, over the past, over the last 12 months, the best robotic company I have done business with, they treat us like family. I know where that quote is from. It's a very large company. It's one of the global leading companies, very discriminating, very tough. And uh, that's one of many quotes uh, of positivity that they've given us. Just huge. Craig, we look forward to further growing our relationship with the Rad Team, build a stronger 2022. How cool is that, you know? I, we go on and on and on. I think there's one more. Uh, this isn't the last one. When the response panel played, the client absolutely loved it. They couldn't get enough of it. I think there's one more. I'm waiting for this one last one. And and here it is right here. Here it is right here. The FTZ agent. So this is a, a federal trade zone um, client. It's it's uh, it's in America. So you know we don't always um, accept things into our country at the ports uh, and at the borders. Uh, in some cases, you can have a designated uh, federal trade zone and you can actually receive foreign goods anywhere in the United States if you pass these requirements. And that requires inspection. So this particular quote comes from a uh, customer who's watching as a basically the FTZ agent um, who was completing our audit today was delighted. Made the comment, this is how everybody should handle visitors. Testament to all the parts of our company to get that kind of quote from that kind of person. We can go on and on and on, but we have a cool graphic to show you first. Oh, I didn't. Do you think it showed on their side? That's OK. I don't know. Anyway, on our side, there is a cool little RV graphic faded into this screen. Now, we've gone through some achievements. I want to hit a few more. I hit fast growing while maintaining the culture. 
some of you guys know that really what kicked this off was funding from a uh, debt renegotiation deal that I accomplished almost exactly 12 months ago, which allowed us to do the fundraising, allowed us to get the Rex, Mr. Don Kirker, doing an incredible job of making that Rex hum, recruiting. Yep, thank you very much. Kudos to Don. We have, um, under Mr. Tony Brenz, tightened up so much of our company that we wanted to be able to say that, hey, if you're a Fortune 25 company, kind of support company you want to work with. You want compliance, you want transparency, you want the right team, you want it certified. We've got that. Nobody else has that. Through a tremendous amount of pain with the process, not physically, uh, Mr. Brenz successfully led us through our SOC 2 Type 1 certification. That's worth a couple of digital hand, hand claps there. And to everybody that was involved in that, because that was a tremendous process, but it elevated our company to this next level from everything, from employee related, finance related, everything. So that SOC 2 type one combined with all of the software development controls that we've put in place, all of the hardware development systems that we've put in place, the fact that we're full SEC reporting on the financial reporting side, we can now definitively say, I can definitively say, you can definitively say, I don't know how any other company is operated better than us, which again is a remarkable achievement. Let's go on to the next one. Now, this morning I mentioned we made the announcement that we're going to go into uh, we're going to leverage our technology that's been developed by Rad G and Rad M, and uh, our tour. I hope you haven't had a heart attack when you see these images. We'll talk about it later. I need you to have a little cooling off period before I engage. That's all I'm saying. Cool off. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to deliver some cute delivery robots that are based on technology that the team here has already developed. Autonomous navigation, human interaction with the perception team, so much more. So um, this is going to be handled through Rad M. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be uh, sold through the uh, the Rad Inc. channels. It's going to be a different market, but we'll flush that out uh, over time. But I want to let you know that you know the vision for AITX is what the mission had said, which is produce devices that help humanity. Five, four or five major companies that are all, um, you know, top of mind companies that occupy a bit of everybody's mind share, really globally, have asked us to develop these robots informally. And we're going to do it, and we're going to do it this year, and it's going to be exciting. So there's other milestones as well this year that I'm really happy to be able to get into. And the reason that we can start looking at this tech development roadmap is because of the cleanup work that we did in 2021 on the software and on the hardware to get to this baseline of stability and performance and best in class processes so we can now build cleanly going forward. On the RAD sales side, all of this is designed to give you more solutions to make more clients happier. And we're going to get into it over the course of this year, but uh, we got dogs coming out. We got new stuff happening on analytics. Our solar program is moving forward fairly rapidly. All of this stuff is going to go towards uh, road to 500 and road to 1000. So really, really happy about this roadmap. We've got some big, big milestones in 2022. It's a big year. It's going to be a big, 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 big year. When I think about the life cycle of the company and the trajectory of the company, I see 2022 
as our steepest year that I expect to have across a variety of different metrics. And by that, what I mean is that we're going to kind of, there's only so much exponential growth that you can manage before the curve starts to flatten. And my hope and expectation is that 2022 is the steepest curve of exponential growth that we have. That's my ex expectation. We're going to multiply exponentially on deployed units. We're going to increase the number of products that we have across AITX, not just across RAD. We're going to get much higher visibility globally. We're going to come out and deliver some innovative products like Stan. Stan, which is, you know, being managed by one of our new resources here, which is very, very cool. I think Stan's, Stan's a huge winner. Obviously, I think all of our products are winners. But we did kill Fred, just to let you know. We're not indiscriminate. <laughs> Fred and Linda, they didn't make it. Anyway, guys, this year there's going to be some amazing new products and solutions going to be delivered to amazing new clients. Now, how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to largely keep doing what we've been doing in 2021. You know, I call it full body commitment, right? I think we all show up. I think we're all emotionally invested because of our culture. You know, I was talking with one of the team members here. He said, you know, he talks to his friends and they're like kind of dread Monday morning. And he said, I don't dread Monday morning. I don't even know what Monday morning is because it's all a big blur of, of days for me and for a few others. But we're going to continue to do that because that's how we got here. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the mission that we're on. That's how we get our rewards. That's what I'm asking for. There's going to be problems, like I mentioned. I'm under no illusion that everything is going to be rosy. And I want to make sure that this presentation doesn't just appear rosy because it's not reality. There's going to be challenges and fire drills. There's going to be all kinds of issues that we're going to fight through. Let's prepare for them. Let's be ready for them. Let's preempt them. But let's be mature about them and handle them. And of course, there's going to be change. And it'll be interesting in 12 months for us to compare this slideshow, this slide deck, and the things that I've said here against the things that I'll say again in 12 months. And I think maybe we'll, I'll do that exercise just for fun, just as we do a little recap. There'll be change. Ultimately, we're going to succeed. We're going to progress. We're going to hit these milestones, these new solutions, these goals. I have no doubt. And it's because it comes back to the team. It comes back to everybody on this call. I'll be working to keep you up to date. These uh, town hall meetings are monthly occurrence. Uh, I likely won't be the only person uh, speaking on them all the time. Uh, I'll be sharing these duties more and more with Mr. Fulmer as we move forward. Um, but guys, again, I'd, I'd love any feedback you can, however you feel like sending it to me. The, the, the key messaging that I want to share, that I want to leave you with, is number one, this is an A-team. This is a special moment in our careers and our lives as far as our work lives go, as far as our ability to affect society. This is a special moment, and we've got a special team. The next is we're coming off of a year of success, and we're going to continue that into, into 2022. And the third one is, is everything that you've done in 2021, I'm asking you keep that up in 2022. Let's continue to get better. Let's get smarter. And those are really the only changes I want to ask anybody to do. So those are my three messages to you on this kind of holiday year-end uh, year town hall. Thank you very, very much, everybody. I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe holiday. Takes some time off, recharges, gathers that strength for a sprint in uh, in 22. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Ted.